So this is going to be the Etruscans, chapter 6. And the Etruscans occupied Middle Italy in the early Roman times. And at the turn of the century, many scholars treated Etruscan art as kind of an inferior form of Greek art. But as time went on, their art has been recognized as being original and important and very different from that of Greek art. So good example of Etruscan art and how it's different and how it's important and how it's interesting is if we take a look at the tomb of the aug augurs um, from Monterazzi Necropolis, Tarquinia, um, 520 BCE. So the tomb of the augurs, um, like I said, is a great example of originality and sophistication of Etruscan art. And it's one of the thousands of underground tombs carved out of bedrock from the necropolis at the Etruscan city at Tarquinia. Um, during this time, the Greeks were burying their dead under simple grave markers. Um, but the Etruscans were actually creating these tombs, which was much more sophisticated than what the Greeks were doing at the time. And the walls of the tomb are painted with frescoes, which was definitely a, an advanced technique at this point in time. Um, and the subject matter is really distinct to Etruscan art. <clears throat> so at the back wall, we have this large door, which probably is a reference to the portal to the afterlife. And on either side, there are two men. Um, one makes a gesture of, or both are making the same gesture. They think it's of salute and also of mourning, um, some sort of gesture of salute and mourning, potentially. Um, <clears throat> So at the far end of the right wall, there's a man in a purple robe, and he's depicted with two attendants, I believe, possibly here, uh, kind of hard to see. But um, the man in the purple robe is wealthy because purple was only built, worn by wealthy people, and it's probably the man whose tomb this is. And one of his attendants is actually carrying a chair, and the other is kind of slumped down weeping. And there's an interesting scene where a man is actually wearing a bag on his head, he carries a club and he has a dog um, attacking him where there's a leash um, also on the dog with this man holding it. And um, it's probably some sort of game that would have been put on in honor of the, of the man after his death. And it's kind of an early form of possibly like a gladiator show um, like those that were put on in later Roman times. And in another scene, two men are actually like wrestling each other. You can see that here. Um, and this actually looks like how wrestlers approach each other now. So it's kind of neat to see these subject matters. So this is really a uniquely Etruscan subject matter and symbol symbolism and all that stuff. So it's, it's it actually shows us a lot about their art and how it's relevant and important. Um, and it's also to, important to note that Etruscan art was sophisticated because it did help to serve as a model for early Roman artists. So it really influenced the art of Rome as well as Greek um, art also, you know, influenced the Romans as well, but so did the Etruscan art. So it does have an important place in history and art just because it's not Roman or, or Greek art doesn't mean the Etruscan art is any of any lesser value. So the main area that the Etruscans occupied was in between the Arno and Tiber rivers of central I Italy, which is now part of modern day Tuscany. So you can see the Tiber and Arno. So kind of around in here, central Italy um, was where <clears throat> the Etruscans were. And Florence was one of the centers of their, um, of their civilization. So right here. <clears throat> And the Romans called the Etruscans Etruscae or Tuscae, and the Greeks called them Tysensori or Tyrenoi, Tyrenoi. And this is how the sea on the western coast of Italy got its name, the Tyrrhenian Sea, which is right here. Um, and there's a lot of different theories on where the Etruscans originated from. Some say they're native Italians. Some say they are immigrants from Asia Minor, possibly, or from the north. Or, you know, it's very likely that they're actually a mixture of immigrants and native Italians. And the Etruscans emerged in history around the same time as the geometric period in Greece. And 
The Etruscans were really skilled seafarers and they were made rich through their trading networks. So trade was a huge thing for the Etruscans and they controlled most of northern and centrally, central Italy in their heyday. So Tarquin, Tarquinia, Sevateri, Volsai, and Veii were their most important cities, but cities, you know, they never actually, these important cities never actually united. So there wasn't really a nation or kingdom, but there was kind of a territory that the Etruscans occupied called Etruria and the peoples of Etruria. Oh, actually, sorry, Etruria, and the peoples of Etruria had a common language and the religion, which kind of marked them as the same people, which are the Etruscans. Okay, so moving on, early Etruscan art. The periods of Etruscan art kind of follow the same periods that we had in Greek art. So we have the Orientalizing period, the Archaic, Classic, and then the Hellenistic periods. Um, and it looks like they never had the earliest period called the geometric. So kind of starting from the orientalizing, going to the Hellenistic period. And I don't see a late classical, just seems like um, maybe it's all one chunk, but we'll get into that as we move through the chapter. Um, <clears throat> so this is a piece here we'll talk about first. Um, so during this time, the Etruscans engaged in trade and that really enhanced their wealth enormously and they were able to mine iron tin silver and copper and then they would trade that and uh, foreign goods were popular among the trade wealthy etruscan upper class and foreign motifs from the east were popular and local artisans began incorporating ideas from eastern art into the art that they made so a lot of that trade that the etruscans were involved with that made them wealthy also influenced their art and you can see that in this piece, which is an orientalizing period piece in Etruscan art. It's a fibula with orientalizing lions from Reg Regolini, Galassi, Tomb, Sorbo, Necro Necropolis, Servitary, Italy, 650 to 640 BCE. And it's gold. And it's about, an, let's see, a foot and a half inches high. Um, and this piece was made in Etruria and it shows influence from the Orient. Um, so it's a gold fibula or basically a safety pin that was used to fasten a woman's gown at the shoulder. And it's done in the orientalizing style due to the five lions that you can see kind of in the central area with this decorative border around, around them. And you can tell that this is coming from the east or the, the trade influence because um, lions are not native to Italy. So this is obviously, this is a foreign motif or a foreign design. And the technique of rapose, which is, you know, basically you pound the thin sheet of metal from the back to make the scene pop out with a hammer. You kind of just, and that makes that scene of those lions and the, and the, uh, the stuff pop out. So that is a foreign technique. And then granulation also, the fusing of tiny, tiny metal balls to a surface is also Eastern in origin. So the techniques that were made that made this piece are actually foreign in nature. And then there are other pieces of gold jewelry found in this same tomb that is just kind of a testimony to the great wealth of the Etruscans, especially during the seventh century which is when this was made. So we'll talk about, about archaic art and architecture. We're kind of moving quickly, um, but this came after the Orientalizing period, kind of like in Greece, and we will talk of the Etruscan temples in particular. They're quite different from Greek temples. The Etruscans used wood and mud brick to build their temples and put them on a stone foundation. So usually all we have to look, all we have to look at are the stone foundations because the wood and the mud brick um, don't stand the test of time like stone does. So unfortunately, we don't have very many um, examples of Etruscan art, but we do have some historical texts from the Roman architect Vitruvius that documents Etruscan temple design. So this is actually a model of an Etruscan temple of the sixth century, and it's, you know, it's as described by Vitruvius in his writings. 
So this is, you know, the closest thing that we can kind of come up with from the descriptions by the author of Vitruvius. So this is kind of an archaic style Etruscan temple, 6th century. Um, it had wooden columns and then a tile roof and mud brick walls. And it's thought that the entrance was probably up a narrow staircase, just right up to the front. And that's at the center of the front portion of the temple. And the proportions were six to five and the columns at the front, um, the columns were only in the front of the temple. They did not go all the way around like in Greek temple design. <clears throat> so the temple really did have this main side to it where all the architectural interest was, which was on the front of the temple. And the sides were typically less important and were not embellished with columns. And it was not meant to be seen as a sculpted artwork that was to be appreciated from all sides, like Greek temples were. They really did have a, a dominant front to them. And like I said, the columns were made of wood. They were unfluted and they actually had bases. So not only do they have um, a capital, but they also have a base to them. And they're also more widely spaced, the columns are, because less were needed to support the timber structure of the building design. So the, the timber roof was, um, was much lighter than obviously the, the Greek temples were made of stone. So they just didn't need as many columns for support. And Etruscan temple, temples typically had three cellas, one for each of their gods. So Tania, Uni, and Menrava, 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 oh, I have a hard time saying that one, but the Etruscans usually placed life-size statuary along the roof ridges of their temples rather than in the pediments of the building. So you can see the temples were quite different from Greek temples of the same time period. They didn't have the sculptural decoration here. In the pediment, they just have it on the roof line. Let's take a look and see how much time we have. Okay, we still have a little bit of time. We can talk about the Etruscan gods really quick. So this slide kind of follows some of the Etruscan gods. They share a lot of the same gods with the Greeks and the Romans, but they are they have slightly different names. Um, so the bottom three on this list are pretty similar, but the others are completely different names. Uh, Zeus is called Tania and Hera is Uni and Athena is Men Menreva, Menerva, uh, which maybe is just Minerva. Uh, the Romans call it Minerva, but Men Menerva, maybe it's kind of the same just spelled differently. I'm not quite sure, but anyway, they're, they're similar. Some of them are very similar, but, um, some are completely different as you can see, but they have, they share a lot of the same gods. So that's kind of cool. <clears throat> 